wire for your needle felted armatures. What size do we need to buy? Let's talk about it. Hi, I'm Pam Duthie and it's a Wednesday so it must be another needle felting equipment and supplies review. Every Wednesday I make videos just like this so if this is something you're interested in please don't forget come back every Wednesday. And just a reminder I'm not sponsored for any of this. If ever I am sponsored I'll let you know beforehand. This is just my chance to show you what I've found worthy of purchasing over the years from my stash and what's not worthy. So hopefully it means I buy it so you don't have to. So although needle felted sculptures are so light and so strong they don't actually need an armature, a great armature can really make or break a sculpture. It can help you get all your proportions just dialed in perfectly and help you build to manipulate your sculpture. But there's so many different types of wire out there and what's this gauge stuff? How do we know what to buy for our sculptures? So roughly the gauge is similar to our needle sizes. The smaller the number the thicker the wire. The actual strength of the wire depends on the material used as well. For instance a copper wire will be more flexible than a steel wire. But let's have a close-up look at some of the wires that I use. So I have several levels of thickness of wire here, starting with the galvanised wire that I used in my Dragon tutorial. This is an 18 gauge wire or 1.2 millimetres thick and it's pretty sturdy. It's I would only use it for large scale projects like the dragon to hold large areas of body. It's hard to work with in smaller in smaller pieces, but it's it's really good as a structural. It's nice and sturdy. It'll hold up any amount of weight. The second of the galvanized wires that I used in the dragon was the 20 gauge which is 0.9 millimeters and as you can see this is a bit more flexible much easier to work with but it still holds its structure fairly well and we have my favorite wires to work with are the florist wires these are wrapped these are wrapped wires um, which doesn't make any difference. I don't find a problem wrapping the wires myself, but um, these are a good bit more flexible. They won't hold up for, for a very sturdy structure, but it's enough for felting because the weight of the wool isn't very much at all. But they definitely do the job, but they're much easier to manipulate into all sorts of shapes. And another favourite for the very small structures, cheap, easy to get hold of, is the pipe cleaner. I don't know what gauge a pipe cleaner is, I don't. I think it's a completely different thing, but really easy to manipulate, but still holds its own a wee bit. And a cheap alternative, I don't know what gauge these are, they come in different different gauges but this is just garden wire that I got from a supermarket for a pound a roll. It's fairly flexible, it's pretty nice, it feels not that dissimilar to my florist's wire. Possibly slightly more flexible even so it might be a even thinner wire that's in there. So another thing that people worry about a lot with a wire is getting some kind of product to get the wool to stick to the wire. Now I'm just using the green wire because you can see it better so it's coated with a bit of plastic but that doesn't give it any kind of sticking power. So I'm just making a very quick rough armature. This is kind of like the armatures I use for my small dogs. If you haven't had a look I'll put a link in the comments and in the cards. But you have a wire and the wool is not going to stick to this wire but it doesn't need to because what you're looking to do you can start at a top area of your wire if you're worried about this <clears throat> and you can make a wrap around the main part of the body and then this is going to hold itself and you just start to wind down the wire and if you keep a hold of this top bit and you're just nice and firm the wool's just sticking to itself and holding on in a strand it doesn't need any kind of special sticky products to make the wool sticky. 
it sticks absolutely fine. And then when you felt that all over, it's going to have a it's basically going to be a tube of felted wool uh, holding on to the wire. It doesn't attach to the wire, it doesn't stick to the wire, but it holds in place. Also, if you find it easier to to wrap from the bottom to the top, that's not a problem either. It's just a case of holding on to your wool. So you just give it a wrap to hold at the bottom. Hold on to the base with your other hand and just wrap all the way up, overlapping as you go. If you're holding on to the bottom and then if it's a great long piece of wire, it'll hold a wee bit because you've gone nice and tight and you can just move your finger up and hold on closer to where you're wrapping and you can wrap perfectly fine. I drafted out this piece of fleece <laughs> by pulling too hard here but you want to just get the nice nice pressure and then when you get to the top just the same just wrap it around the body a wee bit so that it's it's holding there and when you let go it's pretty much going to hold in place for the time until you get the needle it's you don't need any special magical products to make this stick as you can see it's held nicely there I'm winding down, just giving some gentle pressure, slightly overlapping each last wrap. And there is no problem at all there. I can then pull off the excess, just give that a twist at the bottom. And just the friction of the wool to start with will hold it mainly there for long enough for you to get your needle to felt it into place. Don't I wouldn't go off and wrap all the other legs at the same time. Felt this into place till it's held and then go on to the next one. But you don't need any special expensive products at all. So as you can see, you've got a payoff between the strength of your wire and the flexibility of your wire. If a wire is too strong, it's just a pain in the backside to try and work with. It won't manipulate into the places you want it to go to. If it's too weak, if it's too soft, then especially things like thin legs are just not going to hold their shape. It's really difficult to kind of keep the wire straight. So it's just finding a wire that you're happy to work with. And this depends on the scale as well. I find a pipe cleaner great, affordable and easy to get hold of and works perfectly for sculptures up to about three to four inches. Obviously different pipe cleaners have different quality. So find yourself a supplier you like and stick with them. But once we start to get up to larger sculptures, then the pipe cleaner just really isn't supporting what little weight there is there. And you can still use them to kind of keep your size in check, to give yourself a base to work from, but you would have to felt a whole lot firmer just to get the piece to stand up by itself. So then moving up to thicker, stronger wire, I find a 21-22 gauge to be really good and, and florist wire I'm finding really convenient. But also the garden wire that you just get in the supermarket is a great kind of budget option. It tends to, it's designed for being outside so it's less likely to rust. It's coated in this green plastic coating which does the job. It's not the strongest stuff in the world but it does the job. It's cheap and it's easy to manipulate into the shape that you want. 20 gauge wire is a good compromise. It's a little tougher. It's going to stay where you want, but it can be hard for intricate areas. So certainly if you were doing little toes or something, I would go with a much thinner, finer, softer wire for that. And your 18 gauge, only use that to stiffen up the main pieces of the larger sculptures. Even in my dragon sculpture, I only really used that for the whole length of the body and then for the wings. Everything else I used a gentler wire and even then it was quite annoying, if I'm honest. So if that was helpful for you, don't forget, click on my wee face to subscribe, check out the video that YouTube's picked just for you to watch and come back next Wednesday. Thank you so much.